problems. Niggas tell me that they want it when we in the city, they don't want problems. Niggas say they gon' rob us, but we coming from wherever. I shoot a bullet when I pull it, how you catch a bullet like a NFL? Should've known it was me, was it the lion or my dude? Loud and fitting like I am, can't even be a side side. I'm in Nas, Tiz, and you ain't even looking like you a fire. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second game of tonight's doubleheader. The men from Delaware State University get set to take on the North Carolina A&T Bulldogs. The Bulldogs come into today 0-8 in MEAC play and 1-20 overall. The Hornets, meanwhile, come in 2-6 in the MEAC and 5-18 overall. These two teams met back on January 7th down in North Carolina. Uh, senior DeAndre Haywood hit a driving shot in the lane with .3 seconds left to give Delaware State a 55-53 come from behind victory over North Carolina A&T. And that was the season opener uh, in the MEAC for the Hornets. Haywood was fouled on the shot, but he missed the free throw intentionally to run the clock out and give the Hornets the win. As the two teams introduce the starters, Sam Hunt, Nick Reese, Raymond Pratt, 
Amari Hamilton and Aaron Scales will be the starters for the North Carolina A&T Bulldogs. And the starters for your Hornets, DeAndre Haywood, Kavon Waller, Dana Razor, Devin Morgan, and Demola Onifade. So a usual starting five we see from the Delaware State University Hornets. I'm Chris Moore, joined alongside Anthony Bruno. Anthony, glad to have you for the game. Thank you. Glad uh, to be here. How about some keys to the game for today's game? See if the Hornets can pick up their second against the A&T Bulldogs. Well, the keys to tonight's game for the for the Hornets is to start fast. They dropped their last six, and they definitely want to get off to a good start here, pick up the tempo, score offense quickly. They want to contain Dante Watson. Dante Watson is number 24 for the Bulldogs, and he comes off the bench. The last game, he dropped 18 off the bench, giving the Bulldogs a great spark. And the Hornets do not want to give any bench players that type of confidence coming off the bench. And lastly, they want to stay composed and not to settle for long distance shots. They don't want to rely on the three pointer to, to win them the game or anything. So they want to definitely try to drive the ball on the inside, look to put the game in the ref's hands, get the foul call, and win this game. And, and you said it, this is really the team. They kind of embody the thought process of live and die by the three. Definitely. Uh, so what can they do to change that? I mean, because a lot of times these threes are open looks. A lot of times these threes are open looks. However, don't be afraid of the extra pass. If somebody else has it and you know they can hit it as well, they can hit it better than you, they want to pass it. Or don't be afraid to take it on the inside as well. It pump fake, drive, and let the ref call the foul and try to draw the foul. All right, well, we'll, we'll look for that. Two halves of action in the men's game. And so Delaware State coach, coach Keith Walker in his third season as the Delaware State University head coach. As for Coach Joyner, Coach Dave Joyner in his second season as the North Carolina a &T Bulldogs head coach. And again, they're off to a struggle, off to a rough start in the uh, play. 0-8, giving up 73 points a game to their opponents. And they're averaging only 60 points themselves. So they're certainly looking to improve as we get a delay to the start. Yeah, I wonder what the ref is talking to Coach Walker about. I think Demola Onafade has got a jersey problem. So it looks like Devon Mallory is going to start in place at Demola tonight. I didn't, yeah, I didn't see exactly what the jersey issue was, um, but obviously he's going to have to go get a new one. And so Devon Mallory will check in. And Devon was a key player in those two wins that they had to open up the MEAC season. Hurt the calf. You see the the, uh, the sleeve around the calf now. And so a lot of confusion. Yeah, I guess he's not starting. So back to Demola in the middle for the Hornets. Well, Tamola's got the jersey good to go. We're set for action. It looks like he had to take off his, his undershirt. And the Hornets will win the tip. Devin Morgan, the point guard for the Hornets. Devin standing at just 5'10", but he plays hard. And uh, he's a key to this Hornet basketball team. And everybody in the crowd on their feet as they will not sit down until the first field goal is made and Dana Razor delivers. That man has an amazing shot and definitely needs to be used more often in this game. Well, you said don't settle for the three. Well, there they are right off the bat. Dana Razor gets a look from way downtown and knocks it down. So the Hornets now up three to nothing and they'll go into that typical zone we see them in. a and tries to answer with a three ball of their own, no good. With the offensive rebound. And Delaware State needs to control the glass early as well. They give up a lot of offensive rebounds per game. And that's not good. Second chance points opportunities will kill them. And great defense from Devin Morgan coming up with the steal. North Carolina a and can't convert on the offensive rebound. They'll turn it over and the Hornets 
go back to work in the half court. Razor's got another look. Should have been a foul call there, but that's what you want to see. Don't settle for the three-point shot. Drive it on the inside. Yeah, Daner attacking the basket there. No foul call. ANT will go back to work just underway here at Memorial Hall. Hornets have lost six in a row in MEAC play. And they're trying to get back in the win column against North Carolina A&T as the shot no good. And DeAndre Haywood brings it up. A&T in a zone of their own. Kind of fluctuates between a 2-3 and a 3-2 zone. Good pass inside. Haywood gets the jumper and the shooter's roll. An uh, early timeout from North Carolina, too. An early timeout from Coach Joyner. Anthony, we talked about not settling for the three early on. Razor drives to the basket. Arguably could have had a foul call. Obviously, he didn't get it. And Haywood gets the open look at the free throw line. Offensively, what do you like so far? I like the ball movement. Everybody gets a touch on offense before the shot is put up. I like how Dana was aggressive and attacked the basket. Even though he didn't get the foul call, he came back on defense and played defense and hustled for that rebound. So hopefully the Hornets, it's only a 5-0 lead. It's early in the first half, but hopefully the Hornets can keep it up. So another one of, another one of the keys we had to start fast. Well, two minutes in, 5 nothing lead. Coach Joyner's already calling a timeout. So Delaware State executing early on. And there's the monster, Dante Watson. He's going to check in, and he gave the Hornets fits in the earlier meeting this season. Came off the bench to score 18 points. We'll see if... Coach Walker and the rest of this Hornets team has an adjustment and an answer for Watson. Three ball up and no good off the mark. And we're gonna have a jump ball. Sam Hunt's three was no good and now we've got some extracurricular activities going on here. The crowd seems to be into it. Devon Waller being held back by Dana Razor and the referee. And Devin Morgan is, not Devin, DeAndre Haywood is still going at it. And so we're gonna get a double technical foul. And I'm not really sure what the technical goes against Delaware State for. Uh, DeAndre Haywood I think was just trying to talk to Aaron Scales. Scale seems to be the guy the most upset on the ANT uh, sideline. And you like the heart and you like the passion shown from the Hornets, but you also have to play this game smart. This game is too early to begin technicals and to begin frustrated and hostile so early. So they definitely want to calm it down a little bit, but you do appreciate the heart that's being shown. So it's early on in the game. Hornets have lost six in a row. ANT's obviously uh, really struggled opening up their conference play. They're 0 and 8. So both of these teams come in with a little frustration and early on, two and a half minutes into the game. Both we've teams. already got a little bit of uh, fisticuffs going on, so yep. we'll see. Both teams playing with a chip on their shoulder, so they definitely want to prove something here tonight. And the crowd, crowd really got into it there. They love that. And, uh, it's good to see the fight really in both of these teams. Like we talked about struggling early on in their season. Uh, but they've come out, and they're not afraid to fight. So we're going to get the call here. But the ref appeared to call a double technical. I believe one was going to go against Haywood, and the other was going to go against Aaron Scales, I believe. Uh, we'll, we'll get the announcement here in a second. So no free throws will be taken. With the double technical, both teams go back to work. Five nothing, again, just underway here. Dana Razor trying to get the steal. And great defense, great defense. You see he's going for the steal and then automatically getting back on defense, forcing 
forcing the Bulldogs to hurry up their passing and turnovers early. And a good job in that zone getting in some passing lanes and this crowd early on getting into it. So that, uh, that scuffle might have been exactly what these Hornets needed, get their crowd into it. And uh, now we'll see if they can execute from a basketball standpoint. Oregon from way downtown, no good. Waller going after the offensive glass, and it will stay with the Hornets. A good effort from Kevon Waller to create the second chance for Delaware State. That's something we said earlier, the hustle, crashing the board, everybody crashing the boards, everybody fighting for those rebounds is what's going to help this Delaware State Hornet team win the game. So Waller will inbound. Waller, he loves that spot in the corner and in and out, no good. Razor tried to create, Waller couldn't get it to go. And so a and still trying to figure out, they're still in the early feeling out process of this Hornet zone. Yeah, they've yet to score a basket here. Dante Watson's three is no good. Hornets a good defensive possession there. Razor from way downtown. And that young man is feeling it early on. We saw this a couple games ago against Florida A&M. Razor off to a hot start from beyond the arc. So an eight nothing lead for the Hornets. Coach Joyner surely looking forward to that first media timeout. They have a foul call. Foul called there against Devin Morgan, but it was probably fortunate because Aaron Scales is gonna have an easy layup off the offensive rebound. Media timeout. And so that'll take us to our first media timeout. We said start fast. Here they are, up eight to nothing, and the defense looks excellent. Defense looks amazing right now. They're controlling the glass. They're controlling the tempo to this game. So right now, the the Bulldogs are playing into the Hornets' nest right now. As you see, Dana Razor shooting from Steph Curry range. Nothing but the bottom of the net. That was an NBA three from Dana Razor. And so the Hornets up eight to nothing here in the first half. We got it right, land grant institution. Got it right. Pick your prize, brother. Yeah, stop shiny. Said I need my party. Pub to the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Q's. Said I need my 40, pull up to the party, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gassed up, shorty. Said I need my 40, pull up Don't to forget the we party. got the Delaware yeah, Lottery yeah, is yeah. in the building. Gassed up, I'll be so gassed Somebody's up. gonna win up to a chance, up, a chance to win so up to $599. Shout out to my like boy it, Joe, yeah. holding it down for Delaware Lottery. Trick, so don't you try now, Lord, you got, you got Millie Rock or something. Long, let me get this bread. Come here, Joe. Show the people who you are, Joe. This is Joe right here. Joe gonna give us somebody a shot to win. How much? Up to five ninety nine. You gonna do it, Joe? Millie Rock, one time for me. Give me some rhythm. Go like this. We got that Caribbean food too. Get it. Get the food. Caribbean food right there in the corner. Go visit them. And so A&T inbounds to Dante Watson back underway. And we're going to get a foul called on Damola Onafade. Good work down low from Devaris McGowans to get Onafade in the air and draw the foul. Five. And so far, the Hornets shooting 50% from the field, 50% from the three-point line, so good numbers earlier from this first half. And no turnovers as well, no turnovers for the Hornets. And that's really, really a key for this Delaware State team. That's the number they want to try to keep under 10.
McGowans makes the first. And Devon Mallory will check in. He'll see his first action. He'll check in for Onafade. So a t gets their first points of the game. Eight to two lead for Delaware State. And you see a t they really stretch this zone out. And a travel called on Dana Razor. But a t they really stretch this zone out. It's not a sit back and wait. They come at you and attack the three point line as well. They have to, they have a lot of three point shooters in Devin Morgan and Dana Razor and DeAndre Haywood and Kevon Waller. Pretty much this whole team can shoot threes, so. <laughs> and they're not afraid to shoot it either. But the turnover there, and that will give a t another possession. And they go inside. <laughs> Two scales, and scales gets fouled by Kevon Waller. But that, that's a good foul. If you're going to foul, foul him hard. Don't give him the easy basket. Make him go to the free throw line and make two. Definitely. You just see the Bulldogs just taking advantage of the size that they have down low. So Scales misses the second. He goes one for two. So eight to three. Now the score, Hornets try and go back to work, see if they can get inside the zone. They do here. Devon, a mid-range jumper. That's, that's definitely his spot. Last game on Monday, Devon Mallory hit about three of those from that corner. So he's definitely a big man that could space the floor a little bit, kick it to him down low, and rely on a good shot. And that's something that Mallory brings that Onofade doesn't necessarily. Mallory, a good offensive player and can make the mid-range shot. And he's really going to help this Hornet offense with him back. They go back inside the scales. Mm, that's a questionable foul there. Scales 6'9", 233 pounds out of High Point, North Carolina. And so he's got some girth to him. He's going to be a tough guy for the Hornets to defend, especially in that zone, as you see here with Kevon Waller on him. Just and once again, the, the Bulldogs are uh, just taking advantage of a small defender being on a big offensive player in scales. Scales misses the first, now one for three at the line in the last two possessions. But he gets this one to go. What you want to see, though, is Dana Razor is such a great three-point shooter. He's very stagnant sometimes on offense. You want to see him move around, try to get himself open to create his own shot off the ball. Haywood's mid-range shot is no good. And so the Hornets sputtered a little bit here on offense since that first media timeout. Watson from downtown, no good. So and far Haywood doing a up. good job containing him. And DeAndre Haywood just blows by everybody on defense straight to the basket. Haywood, the lone senior on this team, and so he's certainly the leader. And they look to him, and Sam Hunt knocks it down, and a foul called on DeAndre Haywood. And, and that was the cardinal sin, you can't shot. foul a three-point shooter. And I think Haywood might have caught a hand or a, a finger or something to the lip. But Haywood, like you say, he's a crowd favorite, the only senior on the roster for the Hornets. Sam Hunt just completes that four-point play. So just like that, A&T cuts the lead in half. Morgan pulls up from downtown. He gets it to go. And he's back with a three of his own. You give him the space, he's going to shoot it. And he's a great, great three-point shooter. And that's at 5'10". That's what really can make him effective 
because he can knock that shot on the outside, you can't give him space because he will drive by you and he will make the three. Hunt no good with that three-pointer. Hornets trying to use Kavon Waller at the top of that free throw line. Get inside the zone. Not working so far for him. Haywood draws the foul. And he's on number two, Sam Hunt. His first personal team second. And see on this play right here, Dana Razor is just standing by the three-point line. You want to see him move around. Such a great shooter should not be so stagnant on offense. Oh, got to get it in. Throws it away into the backcourt to Devin Morgan. But the Hornets with a fresh 30. Haywood staying aggressive. He's trying to get to the basket. Difficult to do against his own defense, however. Great job on the Hornets drawing that foul. You see they're being aggressive early, attacking the basket, putting this game into the ref's hands. That's exactly what you want to see. And that's his game, and that's a big call as well because that's Dante Watson's second foul. And we talked about Watson being one of the biggest uh, problems the Hornets had in that first game. He scored 18, but now he's got two personals, and there's still 12 and a half minutes to go here in this uh, first half of action. Kobe Gans just checked in for DeAndre Haywood. Gans just a freshman, but he gets big minutes. Coach Walker really likes him. He's an excellent player, nice ball handles, great ability to shoot. Waller, they go inside to him. And Mallory with the offensive rebound. That's exactly what you want to see. Nice hustle on the board. And the fans applaud Devon's effort. Now they continue, they continue to try and go inside to Kavon Waller. They want to get him the ball at the free throw line with his shooting ability and passing. It looks like they want him to be the man to create inside that zone. Definitely. You just, right now the Hornets are controlling the offensive rebounding, the defensive rebounding on the glass. Everybody's driving to the basket. Nobody's settling for shots. So right now the Hornets are playing excellent. So 11.50 to go in this first half. Hornets up 15-8. Uh, Dana Razor with six points from beyond the arc. Made a couple of threes, one from NBA range. There's the one from way downtown. And DeAndre Haywood's been in on the action. Here's Devon Mallory, and that's what we talked about. That's something that he brings to the floor for the Hornets that Molo Onofade doesn't necessarily. He's not the greatest offensive player. Great defender. But Devon Mallory can really help this offense grow. And that's what the Hornets need early, early offense, and let their defense create their offense. Go! Brown versus Board of Ed. Brown versus Board of Education. Right. I say, get a lesson. Who else think they know that black history? No lie, no lie, no lie, yeah, yeah. No lie. Doctor Skelter. No lie, yeah, yeah. You ready? You ready for a question? Alright, come on, stand up. Dr. Skelcher. I'm gonna give you a hint. Who was your favorite African American president of the United States? President Obama. Hey, hey, that's my number two. Clinton. He said number two is Clinton. <laughs> Bill Clinton is black now. He was. He's the first one. <laughs> and so back underway here. Waller going to inbound to our Tim Tavakalayan, who's just checked in for the first time. He's in for Dana Razor. And drives, kicks it out to our Tim. Our Tim for three. He knocks it down. Another three for the Hornets. A nice driving kick from Kobe Gantz, picking up the assist. And that, that's not necessarily settling for a three. A drive and a kick got an open man. That's a good shot. And Artem can definitely knock those down. In the corner, the corner three is the shortest distance three from on the court. So you definitely want to take a lot of those. And Dante Watson goes inside and a good block. I think that was Devon Mallory 
with the block. A lot of hands in there and a great swarming defense from the Hornets. They get the block, goes out of bounds off of Watson. And the Hornets with a chance to grow this lead. It's already a 10. Morgan calls for the screen from Mallory. Had a chance to get the pick and roll. He missed it. He, he, he has to believe in his teammates. The Waller ball. in the corner. No good. And Waller still a threat from the outside, but he's cooled off a little bit after that hot start to the season. At one point, he was the leading three-point shooter in the country on all the NCAA. But uh, still the best in the MEAC. And still certainly a threat and a key player to this Hornets basketball team. And a good contest from three. Kobe on that three-point shot. There's Amari Hamilton who is short on the three, and we've got a whistle. I think they're looking to see if that three-point shot hit the rim and if the shot clock should reset. Aleel Gonzalez checks in for Dante Watson as we get the review from the officials. Just about halfway through this first half of action and the Hornets have only allowed eight points. They've only turned the ball over once. They've got four assists on their basket. I think on their baskets, I think that's a very important stat for sharing the ball well early on. That's amazing, because normally around this time, the Hornets' assist numbers aren't that high. But they're definitely sharing the basketball. Everybody getting touches on offense. Great improvements from last game. What do they call the fat four? I think they added a couple seconds of time. Uh, but that's about the only thing I can figure out for the review. But regardless, we're back underway. Ten minutes to go now in this first half. And a travel. Gonzalez called for the travel on the horn. It's very active in their zone early on. And so with Kobe Gantz on the floor, the Hornets really like to use him as the point guard. And here he is driving to the basket, and he gets the end one. How about the freshman? Proving to his coach why he should be on the floor, why he should wear that jersey. And this is a nice basket. Driving strong to the rim and finishing. Got the screen up top and took it to the hole. And that's one thing Kobe Gantz can do that Devin Morgan can't. Morgan, a great player, but at just 5'10", he's not going to finish too well inside. Kobe Gantz, though, a different story. He's a 6'4", 180-pound kid, so he can get to the basket and finish around the trees. And now we'll see if he can convert the three-point play. The old-fashioned way. Great hands from Kobe. Austin Williams checks in for Sam Hunt for North Carolina A&T. And Gasovich has checked in for the Hornets. He's on for Kavon Waller. So a little bit more size on the floor for the Hornets. We'll see if they can take advantage of it on the defensive end. Gonzalez drives. No good, but scales all alone to get the offensive rebound and the lay-in. Got to put a body on him, box out. Nobody was doing that down low. Good find on the inside. He just wasn't ready for it. But Mallory with a two-point shot right there at the free throw line. And he has range for a big man. He could definitely hit that shot. Well, good find from Devin Morgan to go inside to Gasovich. Gasovich drew the double team, and he got Mallory open. And Gantz gets in a passing lane, knocks it away. Gantz can't get the steal. With 10 seconds left on the clock, three ball up, and good, and another one. 
And that's the second foul on a three-point shot so far from the Hornets. That is, they're just giving up and easy points. And that's elementary. I mean, at the Division One basketball level, you can't do this. And this is, I mean, this is as clear as a day as, as a foul as you'll ever see. you got to give the shooter space to land. If you, if you close out the shooter space to land, it's a foul every time. And so the Hornets have lost six in a row. They're plain and simple. They're just not a good enough basketball team at this point in the season uh, to make those kinds of mistakes. And that's the second time. A&T's got 14 points. Eight of them are in two three-point shots and fouls. Um, so the Hornets, certainly something they've got to clean up. Back to the middle. Good cut, good two-man action there by the Serbian and the Russian. And Artem just has to finish around the basket. And so the long inbound from Morgan goes to Gantz. Morgan comes off a screen and knocks down the three. Once again, a great shooter getting space. He's going to let it fly every time. And they continue to knock him down from the outside. North Carolina a and is going to have to make an adjustment here soon or something. Gonzalez pulls up from three, and he gets it to go. No adjustment needed, just the response. And the defenders got to do a better job closing out on shooters. So the two teams trade baskets. The lead will remain at eight. We're less than eight minutes to go here in the first half. Gantz thought about the three. That goes inside to Morgan. And Morgan from the free throw line. Hornets doing a good job against the zone. Getting yep. the ball to the free throw line and picking it apart. It was a great stop reading the defense by Kobe. Finding Devin Morgan on the inside for a nice two. That's a great way to not settle for the three as well. And so Hamilton drives. He gets the floater to go. Both teams offensively look like they're beginning to settle into the game. Both teams trade him back to back to back to back buckets. But something has to give on defense now. Artem to Kyle, three. Kyle outside, no good. And a good pick from behind there by Gantz. But that three here, that might be one that we talk about, that that settling for a three wasn't necessarily the best look. And there was still time on the shot clock. A lot of time left on the shot clock. The Hornets, they have a tendency of doing that. But so far, for right now in, the, in today's game, they're playing great on offense. So you can live with a shot like that. So the Hornets off to a hot start. They've been knocking them down from the outside. And so... An eight-point lead here as we get to the second-to-last media timeout. And you see here the four-point play converted by Hamilton. Hornets have made that bonehead mistake twice. Here's Devin Morgan coming off the screen. See, the offense has been executing very well early on, especially in this. As the first half's gone on, both offenses have gotten better. And 
So 6 four, 654 remaining in the first half and just getting the stat sheet. Uh, Anthony, one stat I really like, eight assists, one turnover. Coaches will sign up for that any day of the week. Definitely, eight assists on 11 made buckets. So definitely some ball movement by the Hornets. An offensive rebound as Aaron Scales is checked back in for a &T. He gets the offensive board. And, and we've got a travel called against Amara Hamilton. That's their fourth turnover for the game. Second travel for the game as well. And Haywood now going to check in for Devin Morgan. And I think this is a lineup. Certainly Devin Morgan, one of the one of the best players on this team, but I think this is a lineup with its size and offensive ability that can uh, really be an effective one for Coach Walker. And good job from Mallory following his shot. And good hustle grabbing that loose ball, calling timeout for the Hornets. Heads up play to hang on to possession. And Gasovich, well, first of all, it started with Mallory off the miss going after it. He knocked it loose. Gasovich dives on the floor, and that's the effort that you like to see out of a, out of a basketball team that's lost six in a row. Sometimes effort gets questioned, but not here. And that's what coaches teach. They teach you when you shoot it, you go follow your shot. And the reason is why, because it creates second chance opportunities. So we go back to it, and Mallory shot. Not sure if it was a shot it or was a pass. pass. I think it was a pass because I've I seen him. He'll tell you it was a pass down. anyway. Uh, but Gasovich comes up with it and a foul called. For the, for the sake of the field goals made and attempted, it was a pass. A foul called on Raymond Pratt. Fresh 30 for the Hornets. And another foul called. And another one against North Carolina A&T. Once again, just great ball movement. Inbounding the ball to Mallory. Mallory swinging it to Artem. Up top to Kobe. Devon, another fake shot to a pass. And Gasovich draws the foul. And Mallory's offensive ability really showing itself here in this first half. Showing his ability to pass. And that's just a nice two-man game from the big men. And Gasovich gets the first one to go. And I'm sorry, I've been saying that uh, that DeAndre Haywood's the lone senior on the roster. Gasovich is also a senior out of Serbia. So Gasovich and Haywood will both be graduating this spring. Defense. And a foul call, Defensive and I think that foul. was a good one. Offensive foul call, you see the hook. And so eight fouls. So the Hornets now in the bonus. So they'll get a one and one. And now this is this is the time where you really want to see them drive, get to the basket, because they know they're going to the line. Our Tim thought about throwing it down low to Gasovich. Thought better of it. Here's Gantz open for three. He gets it to go. A wide open three. Why not and take it? And there's that ball movement, finding the open shooter. And another assist on a three-pointer. And, and the Hornets now lead by 12 here with five minutes to go in and this first half. And, and the crowd is into it. And the Hornets shooting 60% from behind the arc, which is amazing right now. 
see Artem just caught an elbow to the head. So the foul goes against Artem. And now Scales will go to the line. Ball situation, two to one and one. Aaron Scales. But that was also the Hornets' eighth foul, so North Carolina A&T is also in a situation of one and one from the free throw line. It's been a little unsteady so far at the line. Was two of four, now three of five. And Dana Razor will check back in for the Hornets for our Tim. So Scales makes them both. The lead is 10, 31 to 21. Just over five minutes to go here in the first half. And Haywood, he's one of the few guards on this team that isn't necessarily a great three-point shooter. But there he had the open look. And once again, it was open, so you're not too upset that he took it. And the Hornets are definitely not settling early, so can't be mad at that shot there. And Haywood and just a little bit overzealous on defense, picking up the foul. Gonzalez showing a little bit of craftiness with the ball going behind the back and then crossing over on Haywood. Haywood tried to poke it out from behind, but gets the reach in. So A&T once again at the line for one and one. And Devin Morgan going to check in for DeAndre Haywood. Gonzalez makes the first. Gonzalez from Puerto Rico went to high school, the Florida Air Academy. And now here he is in the MEAC, playing a role for the Bulldogs, or the Aggies from North Carolina A&T. He's a junior, and now we'll see Joe Lewis check in for the first time today. And Joe Lewis, a three-point shooter, he's he reminds you of a, of a stretch four. Definitely. But my thing with Joe Lewis is all the time he plays, he will always have a smaller guard on him or a smaller defender. And I just want to see him use his height advantage to just pound the ball down low and just get an easier bucket than settling for a jump shot. Aggressive pass there from Morgan. Gets squatted away, but Mallory collects it and gets the reverse lay-in. And he has a, a beautiful, beautiful game on offense. And the Hornet crowd into it now after that effort basket. Just over four minutes to go here in the first half. ANT still struggling to figure out this zone. Watson pulls up from three. Another one no good. And we're going to have a foul called, I believe, against Gonzalez on the rebound. And so the call was on Gonzalez. Not particularly sure what it was for. But Razor will go to the line for one and one. And there's not too many other guys you'd want at the free throw line if you're Coach Walker. Razor is certainly a big time shooter. Definitely. That made free throw, Dana Razor increases this Hornets lead to just 12. 
And now the Hornets go into a bit of a press, and Gonzalez is able to dribble through it. A&T looking to go quick. Watson dribbles right into hard Joe at the Lewis. basket. A great defense from Joe Lewis being that rim protector. And raise it from the corner. Can't hit. Good rebound from Joe Lewis, however. Joe Lewis going up hard for the rebound, but boy, that was a big opportunity. Hornets in transition. Had Razor open for the corner three. Fortunately, he couldn't get it to go. That's going to take us to the final media timeout of the first half. Hornets up 35-23. And Joe Lewis will be at the line for two when we come back. Now, I see y'all got a little bit rowdy for the T-shirts. I want to see who's going to get real rowdy for the opportunity for the PS4. And let me explain what's going to happen. We're going to see who got the most school pride. This is how wild you are. And my SGA vice president and treasurer are going to pick two people for the contest. Y'all can rock that out? Y'all with me? SGA gonna pick hey, two people. Hey, I'm beyond all that Let's go! Where DC at? DC make some noise if y'all in here. DMV. PG County. Let's go! Who from Virginia? I want to hear my favorite song. It's going to be next week. It's going to be, who know it? Ladies, sing it with me. Sexy lady. And do what? Go again. Double bonus. Shoot it to Joseph Lewis. So some active activity from the crowd. Uh, we've seen. Had a lot more energy in this building than we've had in games past. Not sure if it was the early scuffle between the two teams or what, but this crowd's certainly in, and their Hornets are feeding off of it. They definitely are with this 13-point lead. And right now, everybody on the Hornets are just clicking on all cylinders, everybody playing effectively. This is what you want to see, especially at home. ANT with some long passes to try and break the zone. They do that, and Pratt's three is up and no good. And Devon Mallory comes up with the rebound. A great defense from the Hornets. You like the switching. They, they didn't let the press break. Good pass from Joe Lewis down low to Devon Mallory. And, and I, the Hornets opening it up. I feel like it's safe to assume you get Devon Mallory the ball down low, and you're guaranteed a two-point basket. And you like how Dana Razor, great defense. He puts his body on the line and draws the charge. Not too many players do that, but he definitely does that. I think he draws at least one per game. Well, you're seeing why Devon Mallory makes such a big difference for this team. Uh, he's got very good offensive ability. And, uh, you know, again, it's no knock on Demolo Onofada. He's a great defender, a great rebounder. Um, and he has a role on this team too, but Devon Mallory really opens up this offense. And you can see why they went to North Carolina and won two games while he was healthy and have struggled since he's been out. And Joe Lewis missed Dana Razor on the wing. Dana could have definitely knocked down that three, I believe it. Little over two and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. Hornets up by 16. They've been very impressive, uh, especially on the defensive end. And they're going to look to close the first half strong as we've got another turnover. Oh, and a double dribble from Joe Lewis. Just a little bit, little bit overzealous there. And Lewis looked like he was telling Dana, I was trying to pass it to you. And just kind of lost the handle of it, ends up double dribbling. Would have been entertaining to see him take it up the court and finish it. Well, the lead still at 16, two and a half minutes to go. 
And the Aggies gonna try and get a late burst here in this first half to get themselves back in the game. They need it. And there they're able to get inside of the zone. Good job by Devarius McGowans to get inside. And he missed it, but Nick Reese got the rebound and the easy land. Hornets try the back cut to Dana Razor. It's deflected away. And we saw a couple of time in the couple of times in the women's game. They uh, they were not too aware of the shot clock. You definitely have to be aware of the shot clock. About four seconds. And Devin Morgan. You, you, you try to play up on him because he's a three-point shooter, but just sometimes there's just better offense. My favorite. Favorite announcer, basketball announcer, Mark Jackson. You know the rules, hand down, man down. Hand down there late in the shot clock. Devin Morgan makes him pay. And this lead really beginning to balloon. What a foul call. And the horn is probably the only thing they want to adjust in the second half is just how how much they foul and, and how, just keeping their hands up on defense, not trying to reach in or anything. Other than that, excellent first half from the Hornets. McGowan's gets the first to go. And you see a replay here of the foul. McGowan's going hard and not sure if it was Razor or Gantz. Couldn't tell from that angle, but Devon Mallory will check out. Kavon Waller will check in. A minute and 20 seconds to go. But now with this lineup, you got five guys that can shoot from the outside. Yeah, this is definitely a, a three-point shooting lineup here. McGowan's makes them both, so the lead is 15. Razor trying to get a little fancy with the pass, stolen away by McGowan. So it's a careless pass there. And the Hornets don't want to get too careless now. And in the first half, going into the second. They want to play strong throughout, finish off on a good note. Good close out there by Reese to get to Waller, not allowing the open three. Mm, and a travel from Joe Lewis. And Lewis really struggling right now to hang on to the basketball. We've seen him double dribble, and they're a travel simply because he's just not been able to hang on to the ball. And he just, I think he's just moving too fast. He needs to slow down, realize that they have the lead. There's no need to rush, and he'll be okay. Well, here's a big possession. Got about four and a half seconds difference between the shot and game clock. Three is up, and it's no good. A&T, though, will get the rebound and the putback by Pratt. So the lead was 17. It's down to 11. Hornets can hold for the last shot. At the, just missed it. at the buzzer, the corner three, no good. The Hornets will head to the half. 42-31, Anthony, really quick. What did you like out of the Hornets, and what do you want to see differently in the second half? I like how they did not settle for the three-point shot in the first half. They drove. They were aggressive. They were tenacious on the glass. They grabbed about almost every rebound they seen. Their defense, they pressured them. They pressured the Bulldogs a lot, causing a lot of early turnovers. And for the second half, they just have to clean it up on, on defense, not try to foul too much, and they'll be okay. All right, so we will go to halftime with the Hornets up 42 to 31 here at Memorial Hall. We'll be back.
in nearby Landover, Maryland. Visit the MEAC website at MEACsports.com for ticket information to watch the Delaware State men's and women's track teams in their pursuit of MEAC individual and team championships. Welcome to the Dell State DSU Halftime Experience. We got the Delaware Lotteries in the building today. And today's contestant is not only Delaware State University, Germany, Miss Beverly Brown. You trying to go ahead and get this money for what? Get back to the school. She told me all the money she's going to get, she's going to get back to the university for some scholarships to one of you guys. All right? She trying to get her paycheck. All right? Now, first of all, can we can we get a round of applause for Miss Beverly Brown one time? Show us some love, DSU. Show me love. All right. Now, where that money at? Where that money? Show them it's real money. Show me the money, player. That's a 50 right there, a couple of 50s. Now, Miss Beverly Brown, this is up to $599. This is what's going to happen. She's going to get 20 seconds. 20 seconds to grab as much money as you can. Whatever you grab is yours. Now, granted, hold up. Now, you old school, right? Now, when you, see, when you give your mom something, some money, where she put it at? Don't put it right there in the bra. They told me I couldn't do that. You can't do that? Oh, that's a new rule. Can't put it, can't put it in your, your third pocket. <laughs> All right, in your hands. Got to be in the hand. Go ahead, Miss Brown. Shout out to all my ladies. Ho! Oh. Spread that money out. That look like stripper dollars. What in the world? King of Diamonds? Onyx? It's about to go all the way down. Hey! Ho! Oh. You want that PS4? You want that PS4? They gonna pick whoever got the most school energy right now. We need to see energy. She in the lead right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. The pink hair, she in the lead. I'm gonna put this on my Snapchat. We gonna count down from five. Not yet, not yet. All right, can we get it? Can we get it? The whole crowd to count down for five, five, four, three, two, one, go! Grab the money. You got 20 seconds. Look for the $100 bill. Look for the 50. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going! Keep going! Look on the floor! Look for the 50! All right. That's it. All right, that's it, Miss Brown. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. All the way up. I'm all the way up. Okay. In order to win a PS4, y'all got to show me y'all can give me lit while DJ give the hands his rock. For the whole halftime, if you litty, we're going to give you a shot at the PS4. Whatever he play, you got to rock out to. And they going to pick the two. They gonna count the money. I cannot leave my house. New York, where you at, New York? All of faces on my watch. New York girl ain't in here today. Hey, New York, make some noise! I probably spent a hundred thousand on fly. QP spent a hundred thousand on mileage. Bruce Lee can get with me. Y'all want that PS4? Who want that PS4? And she's topless. I don't see you vibing. I don't see you vibing. If you ain't vibing, you ain't got a shot. She in the lead right now. I cannot waste no time, I'm really grinding. If I ever said I love you, I was lying. Oh. I with you, but you was always like a sob. Cause I could never put nothing over grinding. I just left my baby girl. Oh, message! I said I won't be coming home. What? Ha, that's a dub, the I'm on the road. Ha, and I need 20,000 for a show. Ha, I ain't walking through your club no more. Ha, but if Lars hit me up, I go. Ha, spin king, that's a fucking bro. 
Y'all got beat, y'all got, y'all got be lit the whole half time. If you ain't lit, I got two people. I got one and two. They got the lead right now. What song you wanna hear? Y'all need some jersey? Don't want that jersey club? Don't want that jersey club? What jersey I make some noise? I want that jersey. Oh, hey, pink hair. Okay, who else we got? Who else we got over here? Jersey Club is coming. We got about three and a half minutes. Whatever, get the hands rock. You gotta rock. You know, I, I see my two people right there. They say go DC with it. Look, don't get red now. Stand up for me one time. And you're gonna party with us. Come on. And you're gonna dance. You're gonna party with us. Come on. Hey, yo! He said it's my boy, B Rabbit. Push that thing on me. Keep it so classy, but I know you're free. Tell me I ain't lying, take a ride with me. Y'all want that jersey? Or y'all want DC? Push that thing on me. Or New York? That go go? Shake that thing for a cheek. Girl, you look good, put that thing on me. Oh, push that thing on me. Shit it low with the booty, sit that thing on me. What y'all want over here? New York? Let me go talk to Gifted. Put your hands up. You got a scholarship. Put your hands up. You got good grades. Put your hands up. You got a $10 good grades. Where my single ladies at? Make noise. Oh. Come here, young fella. Come here. Where's my camera? I need my camera on him. Let's go. You ready, rock out? Uh -huh. Do your thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh oh. All the good looking women sing along. I can't hear y'all. Keep going, player. Uh -huh. Oh. Uh oh. 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 What's your zodiac sign? Two times for the birthday cheat. Three times for the birthday cheat. Go ahead and bitch your birthday cheat. Pick up and bitch your birthday. Hey, right now she turned up. She ain't turned down yet. I'm just saying. And she from DC and she's still rocking. That's what Jersey. Let me talk to Gifted.
Well, shout out to Beyonce. She had, she had the swings. Where my Beyonce fans at? Baby, who you love? I'm on your knees. Beyonce fans, make some noise. If you're happy she's pregnant, make some noise. back for the second half of action between the Hornets and the Aggies. Delaware State leads 42 to 31. A uh, couple things to point out here. Hornets up 19 to nine in bench points. They've got 10 assists to just four turnovers compared to three assists and seven turnovers for North Carolina A&T. Anthony, what stood out to you in the first half? Well, the Hornets are doing an amazing job from behind the arc. They're only shooting 50% which is amazing right now, 7 for 14 from three-point field goals. And they have, like you said, 10 assists on 15 made baskets, which is amazing. Everybody's getting a touch on offense. So Delaware State has definitely turned it around from Monday night's game and definitely turned it around for their past six games. Playing amazing right now. Just one half a play to go. Well, give credit to North Carolina A&T as well. 12 of 14 from the free throw line. They're shooting over 85%. And that's just really one thing the Hornets just have to work on is their fouling. Control their fouling. So we're back underway for the second half. Hornets up by 11. Haywood pulls up for mid-range, knocks it down. And a good start for the second half for the Hornets. They want to match the intensity that they came out with in the first half. And so we've talked about it. The energy from this crowd has been better than almost any other game we've had here at Memorial Hall. 
And I think Delaware should do something about that matchup right there because Scales is getting anything he wants on the inside. It's not the first time the Bulldogs featured him on offense tonight. 6'9", uh, 233. You said it. He's causing problems on Afade on the floor. Uh, they're going to need him to step up and play that role down low. Definitely. Trying. And Odafari with the, the height advantage over him as well. So it shouldn't be that difficult. Nice save. Good effort from Dana Razor. He'll get up. He's okay. Looked like he went down pretty hard, knocked down a couple of chairs, but 21 in white. Still up on his feet. Waller gets open in the corner, gets this one to go. He missed a couple early on, but that's his spot. You can't rely on him staying cold for too long. And so far, two for two, opening up the second half for the Hornets. Now you talked about it. Can they slow down Scales and hang on to this lead? Scales with a kick out and We got a whistle here, not sure who it's on. I don't think it was on the shooter. I think they called an offensive foul on, on Scales, pushing the back. Yep, you're right, Scales gets the call. And so the Hornets, Hornets will get possession, up 14 now and looking to continue to grow that lead. They got it up to 16 there late in the first half, but a and went on a bit of a run, closed it to 11. Forty-seven, thirty-three, just underway here in the second half. Morgan from way downtown, shot no good, but we're gonna another another loose ball foul called on North Carolina a and This one goes against Nick Reese, and so the Hornets will continue to take the breaks if a and is gonna give them to them. Quick inbound to Razor, shot no good. And Hunt slows it down. Blocking foul called on Dana Razor. Wasn't sure if they were going to call that or a reach in on Haywood. But just Dana's first. So ANT will get a new 30. Kick out Pratt, thought about it. A good defense from driving him away from the basket. Onofade really moving out away from the basket there. They double team scales. Hunt from downtown, no good. And the offensive rebound and the three is good by Amari Hamilton. And that just proves what second chance points can do for a team. And they say it, the best time to get an open three is off of an offensive rebound. And there a and makes it happen. Now Waller gets a three of his own, can't get it to go. Just one of four today from beyond the arc, not what you typically expect out of Water. A good rebound Hamilton. from Devin Morgan. Hamilton unable to convert the second in a row. I'm Chris Moore, joined alongside Anthony Bruno. Just underway here in the second half of action. Hornets up 47-36. Demola looks to go five. to work on the smaller defender. That's what you want to see, aggression from Demola. Can't be upset with that shot. And DeAndre Haber looked to win. go for the steal. He just missed it. And good cut and drive there by Pratt, but can't finish the layup. But a and their ball movement looks a little bit better here in the second half against this Hornet zone. Top of the key from Waller cannot hit. And you can see Waller getting a little bit frustrated. Uh, that's his game. You know, we talk about it. He's, he's the best three-point percentage shooter in the MEAC. And so for him to be one of five at this point from beyond the arc is not something he's accustomed to. 
but the foul will go against A&T, so the Hornets will hang on to possession and we'll get the first media timeout. Anthony, early in the second half, but what are some things you see here early on, the adjustments made by both coaches? Well, you see the defense from the Bulldogs making it harder for the for the Hornets to generate some offense. They got two quick buckets early in the first half, early in the second half to, to start off well, but we haven't seen them put the ball in the basket since. But we want to see we want to see the Hornets generate some offense as you see DeAndre Hayward pull up, and then and then Kevon Wallace three pointer from the corner. But other than those two shots, the Hornets have not scored yet. Oh, that's all y'all got for DC? Where you at, DC? Let's go, chill out. Hey, oh, you want that go? You want that? She wants some real go go. You want that? Don't get scared now. What you want? You gonna scream at me? What you want? Oh, win. Shout out to the 202. 15-44 remaining here in the ball game. Hornets up by 11 points. And they're going to start with the ball off the foul call against North Carolina A&T. So Hornets will be inbounding under the Aggie basket with an opportunity to grow the lead. And Haywood moved while Waller was trying to get it to him. And just a silly turnover is We'll come back to bite them later on in the game if they don't fix it soon. Just the fifth turnover, though, for the Hornets so far in this game. And so they're doing a very good job taking care of the ball for the most part. But the Aggies, they continue that good ball movement against this Hornet zone. They're really starting to stretch it out. And their hunt able to get inside and get the Easy 12-footer to go. That was a tough shot, too. He was a little bit off balance. Lead down to nine. And Waller barely able to hang on to it. Haywood gets the mid-range shot. And it's pretty, pretty amazing the difference in his percentages from the three-point line and just inside the three-point line. He's a very good mid-range shooter. Definitely. He wants to look to score more often, too. Put his stamp in this game early. And they call a foul on DeAndre Haywood. And from here, it didn't look like Haywood was even close to Hamilton. We'll get the replay here. I, I don't know if we can slow that down or not, but I, I don't, you know, I didn't see anything there. Oh. It probably grazed him on his shooting arm. So we, in the replay, we couldn't see the hands, but I saw the hands live, and it didn't look like uh, Haywood was anywhere near him. But nonetheless, the refs call it, and another foul jump shooter. And so the Hornets lead now down to eight. Yes. Razor in the corner, his spot. Dana Razor not slowing down for the Hornets. He's got another three ball. And so and but here we are on this end. Coach Joyner appears to have really made some good adjustments for the Aggies. Hamilton there had an open look, couldn't get it to go. They should look to but feature Razor much, again. A&T getting a little bit higher quality looks here in this second half. And so 
We'll see what Coach Walker and these Hornets do about it. But they're still up 11. 13 and a half to go. And we're going to get a foul called on Raymond Pratt. And so that's foul number four on Pratt. Pratt very near fouling out. And so they're going to take him out for Aliel Gonzalez. But Pratt's been pretty solid so far in this second half. Not, to, not a fourth foul you wanted to see picked up if you're Coach Joyner. Hornets moving the ball around. And another try to, turnover. Try to go into the middle of the zone, and Waller didn't get to Waller. It was stolen away. And we get a travel call. I think that's like the fourth travel on them tonight, too. Well, I think that's about like the fourth time they call travel. Yeah, yeah well, the refs are going to call it, you know, and... Hornets get away with one. They commit a sloppy turnover, and ANT gives them one right back. Haywood again from mid range, this time fading away. Can't get that one to go. Uh, Haywood just missed the steal. Well, I think Haywood senses that Delaware State, or that ANT is really moving the ball more, and another. Travel called this one against Nick Reese. Another travel. I'm not too sure. Are we watching D1 basketball players? Oh, this crowd loves it. They love to get on the opposing team every time they can. Uh, but I was just saying, I think Haywood's really been sensing uh, ANT's desire to really move the ball around more. Haywood tried to jump in a passing lane there. Curious to see if uh, Delaware State, the rest of the team, tries to take that mantra and jump in more passing lanes. Razor, a little bit of a heat check there, but no good. And the offense is beginning to sputter out a little bit here. And McGowan's gets inside and gets a foul called. I believe that one's on Kavon Waller. And you just see the Bulldogs just taking advantage of the, the size in their big men and the lack of size of the defenders guarding their big man. So McGowan's will go to the line and ANT has been very, very effective from the free throw line so far in this one. Including McGowan's, he's four for four from the line so far. Make that five for five. And so the lead is eight. Hornets have come out a little bit slow out of halftime on the offensive end. But they've got Mallory and Gantz back in. So we'll see if that this lineup will help create more offense. And I don't know, a block call against North Carolina A&T is going against Devaris McGowan's. But that's just his first, and he's been a very important player for A&T so far in this one. Just over 12 minutes to go, so the next stoppage will take us to the media timeout. Mallory's got it at the free throw line but not much movement or help there from the Hornets. And good job from the Bulldogs. Remember from the first half, Mallory made about two or three shots from the free throw line. So plugging that up. Three seconds left on the shot. And Kobe Gantz takes it on the inside for the great finish. That's the second time in this game Kobe Gantz has 
taking it to this ANT defense, knifing through it and getting himself a look around the basket. Now here he's got a steal out in transition. And that's goaltending. Count that basket, please. It's a and you'll get your wish, Joe. How about the freshman? Instant energy off the bench. Drives to the basket. Here gets a steal and gets another lay-in. Just what the doctor ordered for the Hornets. And they called the foul as well, so Gantz is going to have an end one opportunity when we get back from the media timeout. But ANT began to sneak back in it. Delaware State now with the help of Kobe Gantz. He's opened the lead back up to 12. Here you see just not a great pass from Gonzalez. And then he thought it was going to go out of bounds. He didn't necessarily give the effort he should have, and that allowed Gantz to have the easy lay-in. with that late spurt, he's up to nine points looking to join Dana Razor and Devin Morgan, two players in double digits for the Hornets with this free throw. Gantz will get his 10th point. Mm. And they got to capitalize on free opportunities to score. Gantz one of three from the free throw line there. So Hornets certainly not been as good as ANT has been from the free throw line, and now we'll get a block called against our Tim. And what the Hornets want to do is not get reckless here on defense, and then in the second half, they want to maintain a great balance of offense and defense. There was, there was no need for Joe to fall like that. He got the stop by just being a barrier. It could have been a rebound for the Hornets, but instead, second chance opportunities for the Bulldogs. As you see, a great pass from Joe. Great defense there from A&T down low to get a block and then a steal. But a good job by the Hornets to get back, not allow the transition basket. But here's Reese open for three, and it's no good. And Devin Morgan has to trust his big man. You see, Kevon Mallory was out in transition, and he just didn't pass it to him. He loves that three from that elbow. He's made a couple of them today. That one goes in and out. The lead is 10 for the Hornets as we're less than 10 minutes to go. Hunt from way downtown, short. And a good job there by Reese to swat it out and get North Carolina a and a fresh 30. And Coach Joyner going to call a timeout. Not happy with what he's seeing out of his offense. 56 to 46, and you give, give, a, little, give a little bit of credit to North Carolina a and Dante Watson, uh, really the key guy in that last game down in North Carolina. He's been a non-factor, got in foul trouble early. Haven't seen him yet in this second half. But here they are, they're down 10. The Hornets haven't really been able to pull away. Definitely. They did a good job stopping the person that they needed to stop. 
However, other players stepping up for the Bulldogs and creating offense in this second half. And we saw it in the women's game. Uh, the women, their lead hung around 10 points. They got it up to 14 at one point. It was right around eight or nine. And uh, North Carolina a and went on a run and ended up stealing the game away. And it kind of has a similar feel. Delaware State's had opportunities to pull away to go win this game and you know run away and hide. And it hasn't happened yet. a and hanging around. Uh, so we'll see if the men can pull off the same kind of deal as the women's game, or as the women did for the Aggies. I've been drinking here to see, so I'm kind of tipsy. I know them girls in the club ain't twerking for free. Yeah, she dancing like she should, she'll make her money. I like the real pretty girl, she's the next for me. Oh, yeah, that's it, she's been getting money. Get it over, 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 Nine forty-seven to go here in the second half. Hornets up fifty-six to forty-six, and North Carolina a has got the ball. Well, they've got twenty-seven seconds on the shot clock, so not too much worry there. Nick Reese fixes his jersey, tucking it in before he inbounds right here in front of us. The inbound to Amara Hamilton, and so we go back to work here at Memorial Hall. Ten-point lead for the Hornets. McGowan's a good pass inside to Hunt, and we're going to get a foul called, I believe, on Devon Mallory. And that's who the call is on, Devon Mallory. Yep. And that's his third. Delaware State big men need to be careful not to get in foul trouble here because the Bulldogs big men will definitely start taking over this game. Hunt hits the first and he'll convert. So North Carolina a t really the free throw line is what has kept them around. They've been great from the line. They've only missed two free throws all game. And the Hornets have not been as effective from the free throw line. And so their lead down eight. a and slowly chipping away at it here in the second half. And great move from Kobe Gantz. Once again, being aggressive, taking the ball on the inside, not settling for that outside jumper. Gantz a good ball fake. Got himself the open look. And he's really been big time in this game for Delaware State. And we get a foul called against the Hornets. Foul called on Joe Lewis. And I guess they call him for a reach in from the backside. Looks like. Minimal contact there. And now the refs want to travel from Gonzalez. They won't get it. And great hands again, stopping those half court passes. Great job by Amari Hamilton to keep that play alive, saving it from going out of bounds and then goes down low to McGowan's and McGowan's converts, or will we'll go to the free throw line. And once again, the Bulldogs back on the free throw line. And the free throw line, as we all remember, is really where this losing streak started. The Hornets in a tie game against the Hampton Pirates. At the end of regulation, our Tim missed two free throws. They ended up losing in overtime, and they have not won since then. 
Looking to buck that trend here today. Up, lead now at nine for them with eight and a half minutes to go. Once again, Hornets trying to stop a six game losing streak before they head on the road for four straight. Good cut from Kobe. A great ball movement again from the Hornets. Another big time play, he set it from Kobe Gantz. A great back cut and then a dump off to Devon Mallory and he finishes around the rim. That makes Good 10 points tonight. That's 10 points tonight for Devon Mallory. Ah, I don't agree with that call, ref. Yeah, that was, we're on the same page on that one. Joe Lewis was straight up, had position. Definitely did have position. The defender just ran into a wall. But the yeah, Bulldogs. Everybody in a Dell State uniform or shirt was not pleased not with at that all. call. The Bulldogs just got bailed out. Comes down to a draw, we'll go to the four minute timeout. Are y'all guys ready? Go! It's young and man. Huh? Most wanted on the beat though. Uh, pretty with the pretty. Five Drinking seconds. Henny, yeah, that's why they call me Henny. Four. Brown skin. Three. With sundress, pretty two. What you doing with the one? You should give me those. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. Uh -huh. Even got All right, they had a so shot at it. Look at, it. look at this guy. He's still missing layups. You can tell he on the football team. Who else want an opportunity to win that PS4? I need energy. I need energy. Oh. I don't see it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Shout out to Chicago. Michigan. Let's go. Who got the energy? Oh. Who really rocking? Who really? I didn't see something. I don't see it. He's still sitting down. He don't want it. If you sitting down, you really don't want it. If you sitting down, you don't want it. That's not enough. I need more. I don't see nothing. Show me something. Hey, y'all don't want this PS4. So we saw Joe Lewis there having a discussion with the refs about the call. I don't like when players do that, talk to the ref after a foul call. The foul is already called. There's nothing the ref could do about it. Just go ahead and play your game. Well, just like that, we were talking about how great of a job A&T has done from the free throw line. Well, they've missed two of their last four from the line. And so the lead will remain at 10 for the Hornets with 7.55 to go. One more media timeout left in this basketball game. Hornets trying to hang on. Led by as much as 17 in that first half. But it's been no bigger, and it really hasn't been that close to that deficit again since. And Lewis, that, that's about the third or fourth time he's had about a bonehead turnover in this game uh, between the travels and carries and double dribbles. And that's the seventh on the game for the Hornets, which is still low. Normally, around this time, they will have about 10 or 11. So great job for keeping that number below 10. But costly turnovers at costly times during the game can put the Bulldogs back in it. And now the refs are just not letting them play basketball. They're getting very picky on the calls. And the Aggies are in the bonus now, so it's going to be one and one every time they're fouled. And you said it. I mean, a couple of ticky-tack fouls now against the Hornets. And now Kavon Waller will check in for Joe Lewis. 
Bonus situation, shooting one and one, Aaron Scales. Now, I mean, that's that looks like a clean steal to me by Kobe Gantz, but you see the disparity in free throws taken. The Hornets with only eight, eight free throws taken. This now the that was the 24th free throw attempt taken by North Carolina A&T. So three times as many for the Aggies. Pass inside, now back to Gantz. Gantz again finishing around the rim. Kobe Gantz has been excellent in this game. 62 to 51, now the Hornets lead. And Kobe Gantz, an early candidate for player of the game for the Hornets. And he's been the life off the bench and the life of this offense for the Hornets. Good answer though from ANT, able to get inside, get below the zone. And McGowan's gets the easy layup. So once again, the ANT Aggies not going anywhere. They're hanging around in this game. Artem answers back with a three-pointer in the corner. And when he's open, he's very dangerous from outside. You rarely see him miss when he's got a good look. Gonzalez gets an open three on the wing. He gets it to go. And that's good ball movement and good player movement from, from the Bulldogs. Getting open, finding the open man for the open shot. And once again, A&T comes up with an answer. But Mallory answers back from his sweet spot, the charity strike. And against that zone, Devon Mallory, they get him the ball in the middle of the zone at the free throw line. And he causes problems. Yes. And now we've got an injury, Alil Gonzalez. He was limping a little bit after the three. Not sure if he came down awkwardly or not. But he's going to check out for Raymond Pratt. Looking like a left knee injury bothering Gonzalez. So we will see if we see him again in this ball game. We're just looking at this stat sheet, you see four different players in double digits for Delaware State and only one player in double digits for the Bulldogs. So a lot of offense being generated. Got up and no good, but and Scales good gets the rebound and a steal. Kobe again slows it down for the Hornets. The clock is their friend right now as we're right around five and a half minutes to go and they're up 12, so no need to go fast if you don't have to. And Great effort, steal. there's Kobe Gantz again. And how about Kobe Gantz's effort to steal away the rebound? And the Hornets get a three-point bucket out of it. Kobe Gantz, once again, making his impact felt in this game. And Morgan called for the foul, and he knows it. He knows he pushed. Like you said earlier, Kobe Gantz, with keeping it up, not giving up on the play, hustling for the rebound, creating a second-chance opportunity for his teammate Devin Morgan to knock down a three. And that was Devin Morgan's fourth three-pointer for the game. Gantz, Gantz was very good against Hampton, but I would say at least in, their, in the home games, this is the best game Kobe Gantz has played in the MEAC uh, Memorial Hall. He's been awesome today. Definitely, definitely. It's more impressive to see a freshman not being afraid to go out and do whatever his coach asks him to do, and then some. And just a freshman, so certainly a young man with a very promising future for the Hornets. And now a foul called on McGowan's trying to grab the offensive rebound off his missed free throw. And the ref calls a foul. And so now the Hornets are in the bonus. So our Tim will go to the line for a one and one. And 
Tyler Tim gets the free throw to go. And really, I would expect him for the rest of the season to get a bit of a Bronx cheer every time he gets a free throw to go after that Hampton game. But he goes one for two at the line, so the lead 15 for the Hornets. Good defense denying the big man the ball down low. That's what you'd like to see, great adjustment. I think the Hornets have really sensed where their mismatch has been. They've struggled with Scales and McGowan's down low. And our Tim had Waller open at the three-point line the first time, tried to drive and get it out to him. He got lucky he didn't turn it over there. So 71 to 58. Mallory again at the free throw line. It's easy money for him right there. That's his sweet spot. Keep feeding it to him down low, and he's going to make you pay. And we've talked about Kobe Gantz, but this has really been a great team effort from the Hornets. Here's our Tim with the steal, and a foul called on McGowan's. And I think that was an easy call to make, and our Tim probably not happy with it. They had a one-on-two, two-on-one fast break had McGowan's not grabbed a hold of him. But another one and one opportunity for the Hornets. And they're up 15 with just over four minutes to go, so a real opportunity for the Hornets down the stretch to put this one away. And Devon Mallory with 14 points in tonight's matchup. Our Tim gets the shooter's roll on the first free throw. And Artem, another one off the front rim, but gets it to go in the lead back to 17, matching the Hornets' biggest lead of the game. But this time, though, only four minutes left. Aggies need to get something going and quickly if they're going to come back in this one. And there's a good start to it for them. Hamilton open from downtown, gets it to go. Coming into within the last three minutes of the second half, you don't want to see Delaware State start to fold. You don't want to see Delaware State get lazy on offense and defense and give easy shots to the Aggies. Our Tim open for three. Short on this one. And A&T going to look to push, knowing they have to go quickly. Watson, a good pass inside the scales, and scales will go to the free throw line when we come back from the final media timeout. 3.09 to go, Hornets up 14. Anthony, what are you looking for for the Hornets to close, close this one out? The same intensity they came out with in the first half and the beginning of the second half is the same intensity they need to finish with in the second half in order to pull out with a win. Standing up, don't throw it to him. Man, I got this way. Man, I got this way. Keep standing up. Can we swag surf together as a, as a crew? Can y'all stand up one time and swag surf with me? I'm on my body. Put tight. Big polo in my body. Got a bag. Yeah, we swagging, we surfing, we swagging, we surfing, we swagging, we surfing, we swagging, we surfing. Oh, where my cue dogs at? Where my cappers at? Where my iodas at? 
What a poking storm, man. Rack simming like a pinata. Few blue Balenciagas. Robin Jean with the phone pots. Hit the club and them a black bottles. With me, whoop, whoop, whoop. No set tripping, ain't no. What? Keep. Oh. So scales at the line for two free throws. And AT now in the double bonus, so they'll go to the free throw line for two shots on every foul. And AT really late in the second half has begun to falter at the free throw line. Only getting half, only going one of two. At the line, and now DeAndre Haywood will check in. We haven't seen him too much since early in the second half. But he'll check in for our Tim. Scales in and out, and ANT comes up empty. Can't afford to come up empty when you have free throws at this point in the game if you're the Aggies. And Joe Lewis just overthrew him just a little bit. And Joe Lewis continuing to struggle taking care of the basketball too, so far today. Uh, but with under three minutes to go, he's out there because of his ability at the free throw line. Uh, if they get into a situation where ANT is going to foul him a lot, Joe Lewis is the guy they want out there. And now a take. And we've got a charge. Kavon Waller takes the charge. And that's what you want to see. Players sacrificing their bodies in order to get this win. So big time defensive possession for the Hornets late in this game. And two minutes, 43 seconds to go. Hornets closing in on snapping that six game losing streak. And we've said it, they get set to head on the road for four straight against Bethune, Cookman, Florida A&M. Morgan State and Coppin State all on the road. So Kobe Gantz trying to go to the full distance and too strong off the backboard. So as good as he's been today, that wasn't the best decision we've made. And now we're going to get a travel called on Dante Watson. And Watson's really been quiet in this one so far for the Aggies. Not the kind of effort that they were looking for out of him if they were going to win this basketball game. And the Hornets did a great job. Their bench did a great job of taking care of that situation early. Well, Anthony, I would say the three keys to the game for the Hornets. They started fast. They've contained Dante Watson. And they've taken a lot of threes, but for the most part, they've been good attempts. I would say they've executed all three of, uh, of your keys to the game today. Definitely did. They didn't settle for the outside shot. They looked for the open man. They took smart shots. They were aggressive on the inside. So definitely taking care of the keys to the game. 75-61, so 218 to go. Hornets closing in on snapping the six-game losing streak. For the 25th. First Morgan versus UMBS, both games will sell out. So y'all better get here early. And approaching two minutes left in the second half, the Hornets up 75-61. Hornets look to get their first win in over six games. And, and I expect them, for the most part, to use pretty much all that 30-second shot clock down the stretch. Morgan, a good back cut, and he draws the foul on scales, a hard foul. But that's that's about a perfect possession if you're Coach Walker. They use 28 seconds of the clock, and Devin Morgan's going to go to the free throw line for two free throws. And Scales has been the one guy the Hornets have struggled with on the defensive end, and now he's got four fouls late in this game. Devin Morgan. And that's, that's definitely been the theme of this game, aggression. And you see Devin Morgan was aggressive going on to the inside, attacking the big man, putting the big man in a complicated situation, only leading to the foul. Go. 
And he goes two for two for the line. So the Hornets all but in control of this one now, up 16, less than two minutes to go. And give them credit, North Carolina A&T has had some answers. They played well in spurts in this game. And Delaware State has not folded. Uh, and they've not given A&T any chances to get much closer than 10 points. And they've been in control for a large portion of this game. And now with a minute 45 to go, Reese at the free throw line. Reese Short and A&T, they've really fallen off a cliff from the free throw line. They'd only missed two for about the first 30 minutes of, of action in this game. In the last 10 minutes, they've really struggled at the line. And if they ever wanted to come back, it starts at the charity stripe. You see Delaware State couldn't just grab that rebound, giving it back to the Aggies. Great defense from Joe Lewis getting that block. And the foul call. That was a late whistle. Well, he had the great effort, but there another uh, mistake on the foul. Lewis hasn't certainly hasn't had his best game today. The Hornets look like they're going to win despite it, but Joe Lewis is definitely a guy that's going to need to play better for this Hornets team. And he's very important to them. He's a, he's a kid. He's a big kid out of Michigan. Lewis stands at six foot nine. And another poor job of rebounding for the Hornets off of a missed free throw. And the Hornets just getting a little sloppy here. And guess who? Colby Gantz goes up, fights hard for the rebound, and it ends up a loose ball going out of bounds on North Carolina A&T. Colby Gantz finishing off his excellent game to this point. He's really been the playmaker they needed. About a minute left here in the second half. And they call a foul. Call a foul on Nick Reese. So 107 to go here. DeAndre Haywood will head to the line. And so Anthony, looks like the Hornets are going to get the win, snap the six-game losing streak, but now they head on the road for four in a row. What can they take from today? And take it on the road and hopefully come away with a few more wins before they come out to come back to close out the season. Well, on the road, they need to be more aggressive than they are at home. They want to, like they did today, not settle. They want to take smart shots. They want to play calm. They want to play relaxed. They want to they wanna play basketball. They know everybody on this court knows how to play basketball. And they're, great. they're a great team. They just got to play together and play Get smart. Three-pointer no good here out Kobe. in transition. Kobe camps with the throw down. And that puts the exclamation mark on a very, very great game for Kobe Gantz. Yep, an exclamation point from that young man to send this crowd home happy. And Scales gets the lay in to go. But Kobe Gantz putting the exclamation point on this one for the Hornets, 80 to 65 their lead. Just over 30 seconds to go, so A&T will get the ball again, but they will not foul. Well, they will foul. <laughs> Joe Lewis, maybe a feel-good layup for him and a trip to the free throw line, hopefully something to uh, feel a little bit better, out, better about. But this, the first MEAC win of the season for the Hornets at home. Their first two came against A&T and Central on the road, and they came home and really struggled. And uh, lost the first two of this home stand, but they'll close it out with a win. And certainly one that's got to make you feel good if you're a Hornet. And this is what they needed. And for North Carolina A&T, they will fall to 0-9 now in conference play. Hornets get it across half court, and that will do it as they will run out the final 10 seconds of this game. But Anthony, Kobe Gantz, 
Tell me about what he did today that was so effective for the Hornets in all facets of the game. Kobe, he came off the bench and he he brought the spark that they needed. Kobe scoring on offense or also just playing defense, hustling, doing everything a, a, a player should do when his number is called upon. This was definitely a game for him. This was definitely a great game for the Hornets in general. So 82 to 65, the Hornets come away with their third MIAC win of the season. They snap their six game losing streak and now they'll head on the road to Bethune-Cookman on the fourth. They'll go to Florida A&M on the sixth and the 11th of February, Morgan State and the 13th of February, Coppin State. And then they'll have a week off before they finish out the season with three consecutive home games. Uh, so the Hornets move to three and six. They get themselves back in the win column and win this one 82 to 65. For, for Anthony Bruno, I'm Chris Moore. All of us here at WDSU TV, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Hornets win 82 65.